body be burnt into ashes and let the air of life be merged with the totality of air. Now my Lord please remember all my sacrifices and because you are the ultimate beneficiary please remember all that I have done for you. So <clears throat> there is a, a, a famous um, devotee, a uh, famous king in the Vedic history. His name is Kulak Shekhara, King Kulak Shekhara. Uh, he actually had a uh, wonderful prayer. He he was praying to Krishna that, Oh Krishna, please, uh, let me die now. Let me die now. Because now my senses are fully functioning. I'm in a healthy state of consciousness. Let my mind be wrapped around your lotus feet just like a swan is wrapped around the lotus stem. The swans the birds, the, the white birds, they take great pleasure in uh, getting entangled with the lotus flowers on the lake. So uh, King Kulakshikara is praying that in the same way, let my mind be entangled, absorbed in your uh, beauty, Krishna. 
Uh, so, because at the time of death, when I'm old, uh, I do not know what I'm going to think about at that time. See, when the uh, death comes, we have descriptions in the Vedas. It is uh, a very um, distressing uh, event. Sometimes people say, oh, death, I accept death. I have no problem with death. Let death come. I'm not afraid. But actually, it is a very distressful uh, experience. Uh, see, no one has experienced death before. right? So we cannot actually verify whether the Vedas speak the truth or not. We cannot challenge. Uh, if you want to challenge the Vedas, then first you die, then you come back and you, you tell us how it was. That is impossible. So, uh, we are accepting the Vedic scriptures without challenge. And this should not be misunderstood as a dogma. Uh, no. Uh, we are accepting so many things without question. And it's not necessarily dogmatic. For example, a uh, simple thing. You go on the internet. So many informations. So many informations about things that are going on on the other side of the planet. Uh, can you verify right away? Can you go to Japan verify if the internet is speaking the truth or not? Whether the news are true or not? You cannot verify. You just accept it. And you go on. You go on with that information, you work with it, you utilize it, and you go on. If you were to verify every single information, uh, then your life will be very uh, uh, tedious, very complicated. right? So faith is not a, a monopoly of people who are into God. Faith is a natural uh, propensity of every living entity. Because every living entity it has a minute consciousness. In other words, I know what is going on in my body, I know about my pains and my pleasures, but I do not know about your pains and your pleasures. That only you know. And in this way, we are all locked up in this material body. So, King uh, Kulakshikara is praying that, let me die now, when I think of you, my Lord. Because if I wait until you know, the old age, uh, at the time of death, uh, the uh, the voice becomes dislocated. There's a, like a, a, a sound, like that, because the, the mucus is coming, coming up, actually. So, at a time, at a time, it's very difficult to meditate, right? What is the purpose of this mantra meditation, or meditation in general? The aim of meditation is to prepare for the last moment when we leave this body. It's like the shloka says, let this temporary body be burned into ashes and let the air of life be merged with the totality of air. Right? We're not this body. The body is simply a vessel. We're not man, woman, ugly, beautiful, tall, small, black, white. This is just a vessel. We're actually a spirit soul. A truly spiritual person sees everyone equally, but not on the bodily platform. He doesn't see equality on the bodily platform. He doesn't ignore the varieties. Right? The variety is a mother of enjoyment. People think that uh, there's so many differences of opinion, right? so many conflicts, and they become very disappointed that all these varieties simply create problems. See? Let us unite. Let us unite. Everyone, let's uh, uh, unite on one single philosophy. You know, sometimes people say, God is love. Right? Because everyone can understand what is love. Not everyone can understand who is God. And people who do not accept God. But everyone can uh, uh, identify when we say love. Everyone is loving someone. But <clears throat> this is another imperfection because by doing this by trying to unite actually this is how dictatorship begins dictatorship all one everyone should follow the same philosophy all one everyone should have the same opinion right so actually you know there's a very uh, fine line between open-mindedness and dictatorship you see it is a very fine line. Sometimes people confuse the two. 
So, um, we say that um, the, 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 the unity is on the spiritual platform. The spirit soul uh, is also individual, but it has the same quality. The Vedic scriptures describe the soul as Sat, Chit, and Ananda. Ananda. You know, what is Sat? You know what is Sat? Sat, um, <clears throat> sat, sat is eternity. Yes. Chit is, uh, is actually a thought or is a thinking process, like the knowledge, right? Yes. And Ananda is this. Right. So, eternity, knowledge, and blissfulness. Everyone is looking for eternity. No one wants to die. Everyone wants a permanent situation, a permanent relationship, permanent apartment. Where is this propensity for eternity? Where is it coming from? Because we are eternal. We are the spirit soul. The atheists, they say, no, I'm not. there's no soul. There's, no. there's some kind of a fantasy. We're just a body. That's it. We're just a flesh. So, if we're the flesh, then let me kill you. The same flesh is there. There's no difference. What, what is different? The same chemicals are there. Dead body, living body, it's the same chemicals. What is missing? They cannot find. They cannot find the spirit soul. They're not able to perceive the spirit soul. They don't know what is missing in the body. They don't know why we die, actually. So if we're just a body, then let me kill you. Why are you protesting? Why are you struggling for life? See, if we're just chemicals, why are you trying to preserve a, a, a particular combination of chemicals, right? If well, everything is chemicals, then it doesn't matter whether my chemicals are here in this body now giving class or whether they're deep under the, the, the ground being eaten by worms. It's the same atoms. Why are you trying to preserve the body? See, Because you're eternal. This is the proof of eternity. No one wants to die. This is the proof of the spirit soul. We might not see the spirit soul, but so many things we cannot see, right? Can you see what is behind this wall? You cannot see. Doesn't mean that there's nothing there, right? So there are other types of evidence by which we can uh, know what is going on. Uh, a little bit more sophisticated type of evidence than seeing is hearing. See, let's say I go and I see what is going on behind that wall and I come back and I tell you there's actually a bathroom. There's a bathroom. Ramachandra is taking a shower. Then you can see by hearing. You can see by hearing. So nowadays the scientists they want to proceed by the eyes. They want to taste the chemicals. They want to touch. But the Vedic science, this is actually science also. It's more sophisticated science because it's based on sound. Uh, on sound. These sounds, these mantras, are passed down from the absolute spiritual platform, which is perfect. So, uh, if we simply accept them as they are, without interpretation, without changing, we simply accept them, then we have perfect knowledge. And perfect knowledge, the sense. So, uh, we don't see the unity on the material platform. Quite the opposite, we recognize the wonderful variety of creation of Krishna, of, of God. But we see the unity on a spiritual platform because we are eternal, we are full of knowledge, and we are full of blissfulness. Just like now, we have come here because we want to be blissful. We don't want to sit down at home and be depressed. We want some variety, we want to meet some people, right? talk, you know, experience something new. Because the soul is always looking for blissfulness, for pleasure. So, this is who we are. We are all the same in this way. We are all eternal, we are all full of knowledge, and we all desire blissfulness. No one wants to be depressed, no one wants suffering. It's a natural propensity of life, and I want to be happy. So, uh, right now, the problem is that this, this material body, although it's so uh, beautiful and nice, and we can enjoy it, nicely in the material body, so many things. Uh, it causes us a problem. Why? Because whatever pleasure we derive through this body has a reaction. There's a reaction. 
For example, if you want to eat, then you have to buy the food. If you want to buy the food, you have to work to get the money. And when you work, you suffer. No one wants to work, right? Working is difficult. Everyone wants to get the salary. Oh, when, when is my salary coming? You become anxious. The work parts, we don't very much appreciate, right? That's why when the work is over, oh, finally, okay, let me go and relax. Let me go somewhere, meet friends, and you know, like that. Be, why people are taking holiday? They don't want to work. So, <clears throat> uh, Krishna consciousness, uh, this Krishna consciousness means that you enjoy, but there is no reaction. There is no need of payment for the pleasure. That pleasure is already there within you. Uh, we don't have to enjoy through the body. It's not necessary. Because actually, you cannot enjoy through the body. The body, you are not the body. The body is always changing. You had a body of a small baby at a certain point. But none of the elements of that baby body is here at this present moment. They all have been exchanged through the uh, eating process and sweating and so on and so on. They've all been recycled. The cells are completely renewed. So, <clears throat> similarly, this body, that will also go. Uh, as we're speaking, the body is changing. So many chemicals, so many reactions are going on while you sit in. It is constantly in change, also constantly changing. But the spirit soul, I, that pure self, which doesn't have any of these Monday designations, all you white, black, man, woman, ugly, beautiful, uh, old, young. All these are impositions on the soul. Uh, the spirit soul is unchanged. It doesn't change. And that's why he can observe the change. That's why he can observe the change. Because he's not changing. He's eternal. That's how he can have the perception. Oh, my God, it's changing. It's going through the changes. When I was a little boy, I didn't have a mustache. Now I, I have to shave every day, otherwise I'm going to be, uh, um, you know, a beardy guy, Karl Marx. <laughs> so, uh, the, the uh, uh, purpose of human life is to free this eternal spirit soul uh, from the entanglement of the material body, uh, from the entanglement of the reaction reaction. For my enjoyment, I have to take reaction. This is called karma. People don't understand. They think karma is something negative. Oh, it's your karma. See, you tripped. It's your karma. But actually, when you enjoy also, when you're happy, when everything is nice, that is also karma. You are creating reaction. See? Whatever enjoyment we have, just like we eat nice foods, Prabhupada explains this, you know, people who, who eat meat, they don't understand that by enjoying the taste of meat uh, they're actually incurring reaction because the animals they had to die for your pleasure the animal had to die right so so uh, there's a reaction for it any pleasure actually we're killing living entities not just the the meat uh, eaters even the vegetables they're also sinful the, veg the vegetables they're also living entities uh, what is a living entity? Living entity cannot grow, uh, sorry, dead matter cannot grow. Uh, this, you know, a paper will not grow, will not expand at any point, become a big paper, a grown-up paper. Now it always remains the same. The harmonium also, this building will never grow because there's a spirit soul entering the little seed. That's why the plant grows. And when you try to burn the seed on a pen, you burn the seed on a pen, it will never grow because the spirit soul leaves. You see? So, <clears throat> the vegetarians, they also killing living entities. And if you want to stop eating altogether, just like there's some people who stop eating altogether, they, they're breathitarians, right? They simply live on breath. So, by this breathing, they're killing so many tiny little entities. So, we cannot avoid any sort of enjoyment, any sort of living, actually, we're killing so many living entities. So, in one sense, we're doomed to suffer karma again and again and again and again. 
So, for example, the impersonalists, Prabhupada uh, was uh, speaking about the impersonalists in the purports, they tried to stop all action. All action, they stopped it. They tried to stop. No, no more action. Because whatever I do, there's going to be reaction, okay? So let me just remain, you know, without action. And in this way, if they're very serious about this non action meditation, they can actually reach Brahma Jyoti, which is the uh, effulgence coming from Krishna's spiritual body. So you see here, uh, this is the original form of God. This is how God looks like, Krishna. And from his body, this emanation of a transcendental uh, uh, shine, effulgence. So that effulgence, people refer to it as the light, as the um, uh, the oneness, the spirit, something formless like that. They actually, the impersonals, they cannot penetrate that shine. Sometimes people who experience clinical death, they say, I saw a tunnel, there was a tunnel, and there was a light at the end of the tunnel. When you uh, read about these different experiences, who, uh, people who experience uh, uh, near-death experience, near -death, they all explain a similar, very similar experience. There was a tunnel, and there was a light, and I was going by the light, and then at the last moment, the light told me, you have to go back. And then, you know, they went back, and they woke up in the body again. So, the impersonals, they cannot penetrate it. Behind the light, there is the spiritual atmosphere, the transcendental world. Just like we have here, this world. Uh, this world is not eternal, temporary. It is full of ignorance. Just like my body, I don't know what is going on in my body. I don't know how my digestion works, how my heart works. I'm not controlling, I'm not in charge of my body. It's automatic, it's going on, machine. And it's full of misery, actually. Just like I explained, whatever pleasure you have, you're killing living entities, and you get a reaction for it. And even if you if you want to deny, oh, there's no karma, I don't believe in this nonsense. Still, whatever pleasure you have, you can't enjoy one thing forever. Right? If we chant Coca-Cola, 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 you'll be very tired after a while. This Hare Krishna mantra, of course, you know, in the beginning it seems the same, right? it's the same thing, again, again, another one, another Hare Krishna, oh my God, so I'm leaving. But actually this mantra, if you uh, take it with sincerity, if you have faith that, wait a minute, okay, this is an ancient mantra from the Vedas and these people are chanting it for so many hours, let me try it, let me take it up seriously, even the mind little rebels. But come on, don't chant this. You know, if you persist, okay, let me just try it. Let me try what, what it does. Uh, then you actually start perceiving that uh, this mantra is full of pleasure. And you can go on chanting and chanting and chanting and chanting it. And you're not getting tired of it. Uh, you can actually chant this mantra 24 hours a day. And that is the most convenient way how to meditate. If you want to sit down, uh, just like, you know, you were, you know, I saw you were sitting down and, you know, hearing nicely. If you want to just sit down like that and think of nothing, uh, that is a very difficult job. It's impossible and it's unnatural because the mind always wants some kind of a engagement. You see, but the engagement is rascal dumb. Always the mind is dragging us here and there. We are not in charge of the mind. The mind is, you know, putting us into depression sometimes. Right? You're in a very bad mood and you can't get out of it. People come and they say, cheer up, come on man. And you're not able to uh, cheer up. Right? You're very down. And say, you know, no, you have no taste for anything. Right? So that's the mind. The mind is completely overpowering. Your nonsense, you have done this and nothing makes sense and blah, blah, blah. He's like a, a brainwasher, a mind. Um, so, so the purpose of yoga is to control the mind. Instead of the mind controlling me and putting me down or putting me up, sometimes the mind tells you, oh, you're wonderful, everyone loves you, uh, you're so beautiful, you're so intelligent, wow, wow, check this out, everyone is nonsense except you, you're the best. That is another trick of the mind, you know, sankalpa, accepting, oh, praise, oh, wonderful, I'm the best. And then vikalpa, rejecting, oh, 
I made a mistake, you know, you're overpowered by the material energy and then you suffer it. Oh. So this mantra, what is a mantra? Mantra means free your mind. Man means the mind, tra means free. Free your mind takes you out of both of these illusions. I'm perfect, I'm God, I'm the best, or I'm the worst. These are all tricks of the ego. The mantra takes you beyond this. You know, the mantra, especially the Hare Krishna mantra, that tell you, will tell you that uh, you are not important. It doesn't matter whether you are successful or unsuccessful. What matter is Krishna. Krishna is the most important. If you think of Krishna, then your benefit is automatically included. Because, as Prabhupada says, you are part and parcel of Krishna. You're part and parcel of Krishna. So if you think of Krishna, if you think of Krishna's benefit, right, we, we're actually engaging in personal service to Krishna. We're, just, we're not just believing in Krishna, I believe in Krishna. We directly chant for him. He's a person, just like you are a person. So if I want to uh, appreciate you as a person, I'm going to render some service to you. I'm going to inquire, what do you like? What kind of food do you like? Would you like halaba or more kitchri or puri or what would you like? If you like halaba and you hate puri, I'm not going to give you puri, right? I'm going to give you halaba because you're a person. You have your likes and dislikes. See, no one likes to be controlled that now if I tell you that, oh, you can't wear a t-shirt like that, you can't wear this, you know, here. We don't like green color. Or we don't like the hair like that. Like you have uh, dreadlocks, we don't like the dreadlocks. You should have, you know, like this. So you, you become disturbed. Why? Why you? This is my choice. I like it. Right? If someone asks you, why you? Sometimes people, they ask, many times, they ask, why dress like this? When we go on, on the street, they, they, they challenge, why you dress like this? Why you have this? Why you have shaven head like that? Why? Why? So it's very difficult to answer. Why? You know, because, you know, it's in our religion, I have to follow the rules and regulations. And then you look like, like a brainwashed person. You know, you look like a, like a robot. You know, and then they can laugh at you, nonsense, you're just following some dogmas, and so on and so on. So how do you answer? So, there, there is an answer to this. The answer is that I'm dressed like this, I, I have a hair like this, because I like it. And there's no, you have no right to say why. You have no right to say why. That's my freedom. Freedom has no why. See? The rules and regulations, the law, there's, okay, there's some reason. You can't kill a living person because it is against the law. You're going to go to jail. There's some duality. But freedom, there's no consequence. Freedom is just what it is. So, we're tiny little parts and parcels of Krishna. And by analyzing ourselves, how we become agitated when our freedom is impeded, we can understand how Krishna feels. See? Krishna also has that feeling like we have. If sometimes people say, oh, why God is like this? Why he has a, a peacock feather like that? Or why has a blue skin? What is this nonsense? Why has blue skin? Uh, there is no reason for this. There is no, no reason for why. Because he, you know, one time he fell into a blue color. Or, you know, there's no reason. Krishna is eternal. And his form is eternal. And his freedom is eternal. He is like this because he likes it. And if you want to say why, there is no answer to this question. It's not dogmatic. It's beautiful. Because God is a, a person. He, he has a free choice. Just like we have free choice to love him. And if we misuse that choice, we can be here, birth after birth, and so-called enjoy without him. So, <clears throat> the purpose of human life is to liberate the soul from this material body, from this uh, entanglement of material existence, from these dualities, enjoyment, suffering, sadness, happiness, evil, good, morality, immorality, transcend this, transcend. And uh, realize your constitutional position. Your constitutional position is that you are eternal servant of Krishna. This is what the impersonalists, they don't like this. Just like I said before, they become disgusted, they become disappointed from so many varieties. See? In the material world, 
everyone is serving someone. It's not necessarily a negative service. There's negatives. When we love someone, it's like the mother. The mother loves the child, so she, she serves the child. The child, you know, you know, pulls his pants and, you know, you have to wash him and so many things. So the mother, because she loves the child, she serves him very nicely. Although the mother is superior, right? Intelligence and bodily strength and everything, she's superior. But actually, in one sense, she's inferior because the, the, the child is the boss. Mommy, I want this. Give me the milk. I need milk. Ah! And the mother has to supply it very obediently, like that. The boss at work, right? If you serve the boss very nicely, then you get uh, uh, promotion. You get promotion. Uh, the, the, the lover serves the beloved, right? The girl, you know, uh, when the, the boy buys her some ring or some jewels or some pearls or like that, she becomes very pleased. Oh, okay. You say you love me, love me, love me, but now you're proving it. Okay, so now I have more trust in you. Now I'm going to marry you. Like that. It's not necessarily negative. Negative. It's serving. Why should I serve someone? I'm free. I'm free. Actually, <laughs> that is another contradiction that although we're free and we have free choice, ultimately we don't like to be free. We want to be subservient. Right? If, if you say you can do whatever you want, you become bored. I can do whatever I want. I can be God. I, I, I can control everything. So if you have that kind of power, you become bored. Many rich people, they have all the money and they have all the power, and then they commit suicide. Right? Many rich people, they commit suicide. Many famous Hollywood stars or whatever, whatever. Because they don't understand this point, that service is required. We need service. We need service. We need to serve. We need to love. But love is a, a very vague terminology. Love means you serve. You serve. You express that love. If I say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And that's it. Oh, you already did the offering? Oh, okay. And then it's, it's fake. It should manifest practically. Okay, I'm going to give you some presents. Or I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to write a song about you or something like that right so <laughs> this unlimited freedom this is another illusion the impersonals they have this ambition we want unlimited freedom we want to be God we want to merge with God and they become bored because they're missing they, they don't know where to serve who to serve so that's why they descend back into the cycle of karma and they suffer again so uh, unfortunately we're a little bit short on time. I'm just going to sum it up. This Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the most easy way how we can serve Krishna. Again, by chanting his name. He is not different from his name. So when you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, you're directly in association with Krishna. You're not able to perceive it because you're trying to perceive with the material senses. You think you're the body. But by chanting the mantra again and again, and engaging in this uh, process of Krishna consciousness, you can completely spiritualize your body, uh, spiritualize your senses, and attain what is called a Siddha Sarupa, perfection of your spiritual body, by which you can directly perceive Krishna's presence and interact with Him, just like we're interacting right now. You can uh, talk to Him, you can hug Him, you can kiss Him, you can love Him, you can do whatever you want with Krishna. This is possible simply if you take this chanting Hare Krishna mantra uh, uh, a process very seriously. So I'll stop here. If there are any questions, you're very much welcome to ask. So which, uh, which uh, mantra, which, what is the number of the mantra? 17. 17. No questions. Questions, challenges. Okay. Everyone agrees what I said? Yes? <laughs> you agree? Mm -hmm. You accept fully? It makes sense. Okay, so are you ready to join us? <laughs> yes. So the beginning of the mantra is let let this body be burnt into ashes. So that refers to the uh, ritual of death. Uh, cremation, yes, which is in the uh, 
which is the norm in India, right? Yeah, in India they burn the body because the soul needs to get free. Right. If they don't burn the body, the soul is still attached. So the soul cannot get freedom. Oh. Right? The, the soul is still lingering above the, the dead body. Oh, that's me. Oh, oh, oh. I want to come back. You know, but he can't. That doesn't apply to uh, devotees, right? Because I saw uh, the burial of uh, Prabhupada, and he was, he was actually. Yeah, uh, in terms of pure devotee, pure yeah, devotee, he, his body is not material. So oh, you're right. His body and soul are non different. Okay, so there's no need to burn it. No, that is a great offense. Oh, wow. His body is the soul. His body is the soul. Is the soul. There's no difference. For him, it's not that he needs to get liberated from the body. His body is the soul. Why? Uh, because he's fully spiritual. Just like you put a, an iron rod in a fire. By gradual heating, it becomes fiery. Right? becomes fire. So in the same way, when we atta attain perfection, this very body becomes spiritualized. Spiritual body. The soul is not impersonal. It's not formless. It has a form, the shape, everything, but it's eternal. Hmm. Does it answer your question? It's a little bit yeah. difficult, yeah. very advanced yeah. high, topic, high, very high, high topic. topic. Yes, we but, will, uh, but just like Krishna, just like Krishna, you know, Krishna is not different from his body. Krishna doesn't have a soul. Krishna doesn't have a soul like we have. He is the soul. His body is the soul. He's a super soul. I'm sorry. He is the super soul. He is no super soul is a little different. That is in the material world. Okay. That is the expansion of Krishna. That's the expansion. That is not the uh, ultimate. It's not the ultimate. This uh, is one of the three features. Yes. The that soul. is only in the material world. The super soul. Okay. okay. The Bhagavan feature, Bhagavan the personality, is, is the source of all of these. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So your name is Sophie. If you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, thank you. Right. How about you guys? No questions. No questions? Uh, you should not accept blindly. You should ask some questions. <laughs> Alright. She is a Panishad Ki Jai, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai, and it can go to Brahma and the Ari 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 Bos. Panishad Ki Jai, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai, and it can go to Brahma and the Ari Ari Bos.